Hunter Kyokai got Tachiya. Oh, oh, finally. <laughs> okay, at this point. Great, that's wonderful. Love to hear it at long last. Walking to his next PR appearance. <laughs> Someone never took the hunter exam and it shows. They're already. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait. What? Why are they here? Did the Phantom Troop put fear in their hearts? <laughs> I wouldn't get excited just yet. <laughs> Humiliating. Whatever he's planning is going to fail. The Lion Ant reeks of someone who thinks they're born special. It really doesn't have that much to offer relative to his desired position. If it wasn't for the, the hint of betrayal, I would be a little bit surprised that he would even try to feign any kind of allegiance to anyone. People like that I've met in my life, they end up becoming kings of a very, very, very tiny world of weird people. Infiltration X and X Selection. Hunter X Hunter episode 98. I love this whole, <laughs> this whole solid snake aesthetic. All weapons are procured on site. They brought only their clothes and their cigarettes. It's wild that they're alone. It's wild that it's a good thing nothing like this exists in real life. That sounds terrible. Very clever of the king to use this country as a home base. Already great infrastructure. Probably generational too. <laughs> That's very on the nose. <laughs> Very direct. Hunter X, Hunter Rider, really had an interest. What? Gon's is not, not that politically minded. Yeah, you're endangering everyone just by being here. Spoiler alert, shades of brown and gray. Somewhere in one of these houses, someone is secretly watching music from East Gorto. At risk to their lives. Paging! They did, a, yeah, let's say they did a really great job. Really thorough, that cover up. Let's put a chair over it. They hit, they, well, they really hit nothing. They hit nothing at all. They moved a chair. God, this is dark. <laughs> I like this, like, third of an episode expositional break into North Korea. I'm actually really curious how it actually goes down. And I don't even mean that in a usual way of, like, I don't believe propaganda, I don't believe what I hear. It's just more like, you can never really imagine something fully unless you experience it. I wonder in this situation what would end up feeling normal, where the common elements of people's general daily lives end up being surprisingly congruent with just about everyone else. Like, where is the line of just common human experience that, that really cannot be altered by situation? And what things are altered by the severeness of the situation? Oh, oops, I meant West, West Gorto. I mean, I can see this being relevant to the plot of Hunter Hunter because this is the system that the King Anne has commanded to his benefit. But like, really, the stakes of this are not East Gorto and its politics. It's the King Ant. This season has been very educational. First compound interest, now national, international politics. Yeah, and Beijing in this world, just part of the same country. Leave the map to someone else, but he's onto something. They can use water divination. Oh, right, that's true. That too. And that's... Oh, yeah, they do that. It's such a cool power, though. It's so amazing. It's interesting. 
Very interesting. Okay, I think I'm understanding it better now. Maybe it's the human in them a little bit, but they're deviating from their original programming, it seems. The whole ant thing, like I was saying in a previous episode, the question of what is the organism itself, I think for some purposes, you could look at it as the individual colony is the organism. So the ant's natural, original instinctual drive is not to create one dominant colony, but to spread as many colonies as possible, even at their own individual expense. Hence that exponential ant growth chart we saw. This is a little bit different. This is the king, this king, consolidating his grip on the earth. It's not necessarily for, for procreation purposes. It's for power or rule or influence or some other goal outside of just breeding. He's become a human dictator. <laughs> Alright. Interesting. Let's look at the bright side. Let's cut the strings and we'll probably learn more about this power in the, mean in the meantime. I wonder how willing they'll be to cooperate. After the first one, you got a target on your backs. This is a really tough call. Where do the people's lives, innocent people's lives, come in in this calculation? いや、4.9 can you stay hidden, Gon? <laughs> he is right to be concerned. Oh, that's a tougher one. Just stay like, away from any living thing. Don't look at anything. Just find a hole in a tree, a cave. Stay in there. Cover your eyes. And what is that coverage, though? You've been an East Gorto? Oh, splitting up is wild, though. Oh, they've already been spotted. Oh, Ooh, scary. For whatever's talking. Go into target. Go look so sweet and innocent, ready for the picking. Oh, this. Oh, this dude. That's all right. Everything's fine. Yeah, they and they are really traveling in this arc. They're all over the place. Maybe step away from the window, maybe. Right, they don't know yet. Oh yeah, this too. This is a really tough one. As easy as it is to pass judgment from a, a different situation or one of relative peace and safety, very few people I think actually have legs to stand on this this moral position. I would say that literally almost everyone, myself included, if history is any indication, is immune to even the simplest pressures of a healthy functioning society where their lives are not at stake. Like at any point, if anybody has ever done something they didn't fully feel great about doing or love doing or feel was right to do, but did it, you know, for their own personal benefit to make the situation gel, then it's almost certain they would also fold to this sort of societal wide, your life at stake societal movements. I mean, in the first place, for a lot of people, it wouldn't even be a moral challenge. It would just feel right. I also believe that the correct, maybe because it's the most useful and enduring philosophy, is to make people responsible for all their choices, even the ones they're not fully aware they have. I just think that some sympathy is due there, and giving the people the chance to amend their mistakes through action, because it's not easy. <laughs> Get away from the window. The backlit window. You brought a lollipop? To North Korea? That's <laughs> yeah, what I was getting at. It's a tough call. This is a very, very difficult calculation. It's gonna sting forever. Even if, after victory, this will haunt you.
I think that's that is the key thing. Yeah, like show me a way to save the five million, and then also save the the remaining four hundred fifty thousand. Personally, there's something I really don't like about this kind of arithmetic. Like this number is higher than this number, so this is the moral choice. Because abstractly, what is the value of a human soul? And more practically, it just assumes way too much. But it's not enough to just lament that something is wrong or something is terrible. It's obviously terrible. That's why over the course of watching shows, I've come to the conclusion that heroism is a two-parter. The ideal hero has two sides to match the, the the dual problem of doing what's moral and doing what's practical. And that is that you have to do what's right and follow your heart at all times, but also win. The ultimate heroic path here is to save everyone. But if you're leaning on arrogance, bravado, looking only at how you feel as opposed to the impacts of your actions, not taking everything into consideration, in a way, you're not even that far from villainy. It's such a precarious line, always. The more you try to live these things out, even in very small, inconsequential matters, the more you realize how difficult it is to get this right. This is something that's going to haunt Knuckle for the rest of his life, even if they save humanity, because it's turning a blind eye to that moral compass, letting people die for like a quote-unquote greater good, and nothing will ever take that away. But I think it is important to keep in mind the fact that in heroism, in, in trying to fix the wrongs that you see. You're not the perpetrator. You are a respondent to the perpetration. What you do or what you don't do that you could have done are the things that are on you. It's a safe guideline. Do what you can. Maybe you should You need to activate your Nen. There you go, there you go. What is that? Okay, Jafar. Infinite power in a teeny little lamp. Sha 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 sha. <laughs> yes, we just saw you do that. You don't need to tell us that. Get it. We get it. Oh, I see. That's his thing. Sha 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 sha. There you go. That was when he him to just rip himself out. <laughs> it would have been so cool if he just, like, severed his tail as a captive and tied him up. There you go again, caring about the ants. <laughs> I'm saying, need a hole. Find a hole. There you go. Why are there so many of them around here? Is he a marathon runner? He finished his marathon and came straight to North Korea. So it's over already? We spent so much of that episode's time on <laughs> geopolitics. <laughs> we didn't have time for a show. Anything else. We didn't have time for going. I can't complain after the, the two back-to-back Phantom -back Troop episodes, though. The animators may have just needed to rest their wrists. Listen, guys, we're just gonna have Gon and Kalua talk about international issues as they gently walk through a repeating forest background. Gon's gonna blow it. <laughs> it's my feeling. He, he, I don't know. I don't know. Whether or not he blows it, I feel, will be a, a, a factor of luck. He's just... He's a magnet for trouble. It's two magnets. Gon is a magnet for trouble, and trouble is a magnet for Gon. Especially given the fact that there are so many ants here. There, it seems like there's something else going on in this area that Gon's gonna stumble into. One thing, though, I think is really important about this episode is somehow it manages to raise the emotional stakes even further because this arc has always been about a danger to humanity but up to this point the the crisis has mostly been the characters facing their own fears and their own weaknesses fighting an enemy much stronger than themselves at a you know almost certain chance of death now it's even more than that it, it's all of that plus they have to face all of this while simultaneously being aware of the fact that hundreds of thousands or millions of people are dying around them while they sit in wait of this thing that they probably can't defeat you imagine that this is the kind of incident that will retire a lot of people for you know people PTSD and what have you. This is the kind of thing that makes or breaks you emotionally, not even talking about survival. People like Knuckle and Moral cried over an ant queen's death as she went on a deranged rant about her menace son. Can't imagine what they're going through.